Hello and welcome to this special edition of Cronkite News. I'm Victoria Mendoza. Thanks for joining us. Here at Cronkite News, we have a team of reporters dedicated to tracking trends in the business sector. Here are some of their top stories on the Money Beat. Turn on HGTV and you're sure to see people flipping houses. And that trend is going strong here in Arizona. Cronkite News reporter Erica Arrington spoke to local real estate experts to find out what it takes not to flop with your flip. You could say there's a house flipping frenzy going on here. Our state is one of the best places to flip a house, according to a Wallet Hub report. And those shows you watch on cable are forcing flippers to do the job right. We have a newer housing stock uh, to begin with, so the houses themselves aren't as old as houses in the Midwest and on the East Coast. Marty Boardman fixes and flips homes here in the Valley and says that it is a very competitive market since buyers know what goes into a proper flip. With the proliferation of these house flipping reality TV shows, people are up on the latest design trends and styles, so they want to see that your house looks like the house they saw on HGTV the night before. And, and they want to know that the rehab was done right. And they can tell when the rehab was done right or when it was done wrong. According to Tina Tamboer, senior analyst for the Cromford Report, which tracks the Phoenix housing market, flippers are able to buy homes for around $170,000 and then resell them after renovations for around $210,000. That's the market the fix and flip investor is catering to. Somebody who wants a move-in ready home, uh, within 100 to 300,000, they're very, very active, almost exclusively in that. Uh, when it's a seller's market, it's great for fix and flip investors because you know when your house is done, there's going to be a buyer ready to buy it. And our great climate also attracts a lot of buyers. Uh, people from the Midwest, from the East Coast, from Canada, uh, they want to buy houses here in Phoenix and, and live here. Uh, so it's an attractive market for all types of investors. In the real estate market, for a home to be considered a flip, the home must be purchased, flipped, and sold all within a six-month period. Erica Arrington, Cronkite News. Millennials joining the workforce need a college degree now more than ever. In Kirikau, Marigny attended SRP's economic forecast breakfast to see what economists have to say about the importance of going past the high school diploma. Our biggest challenge, I'm often asked, what is the single biggest, it's not the debt. It's not global warming, it's not interest rates. Rather, Todd Buckholz, former White House economic advisor and one of the keynote speakers of this morning's economic forecast breakfast, says education is the biggest challenge to the future of the economy. If you don't have at least a high school education in this globalized economy, you are competing with the last peasant in Mongolia who yoked a yak to a plow. You're probably competing against the yak. Dr. Maria Harper Marinick, Chancellor of the Maricopa County College District, stresses that while high school diplomas are necessary, they are no longer sufficient. There are not only uh, specific skills, uh, technical skills required, but an, an expectation that someone knows how to think critically and someone knows how to work in teams and someone knows how to communicate and write and speak and many, many, many um, skills that would develop through access to post-secondary education. President and CEO of the Greater Phoenix Economic Council, Chris Camacho, agrees that education is crucial to teaching the next generation of innovators. Focus on talent and education and, and really the disposition of how we uh, educate our citizens is going to lead to dramatic economic performance. He says that Phoenix has been a testing ground of disruptive technologies like driverless cars and wearable technology. In Scottsdale, in Kirikou, Marinia, Cronkite News. Camacho also says that the innovative talent of the incoming workforce will help bring big businesses such as Amazon to the state. Glendale will soon be home to another IKEA that's expected to stir up competition in the furniture business. Cronkite News reporter Erica Arrington shows us what economic impact this could have in the West Valley. An IKEA just like this one in Tempe will be right here below the 101 on Bethany Home Road just south of the Cardinal Stadium. With the Swedish furniture store IKEA making its debut in Glendale, expect economic growth and business competition. One competitor, American Furniture Warehouse, is located just on the other side of the Loop 101. It would be a boon to uh, those complementary businesses that'd be restaurant and bar. 
um, entertainment venues that uh, benefit from a greater density of people would benefit. Dennis Hoffman says having two furniture stores near each other provides the same benefit for shoppers as a cluster of car dealerships. Comparison shopping is easier when like businesses are in the same neighborhood. Shopper Julie Severson says even though people will be checking out the new store, she believes American Furniture can keep their customer base. If American Furniture stays more customer oriented and they do have products that are made in the USA, they would definitely get my business and a lot of my friends and family because that's kind of how we roll. Hoffman says that American Furniture has more traditional products while IKEA has more contemporary and affordable designs which will draw different kinds of customers. Competitors, furniture store competitors of course, um, would feel the competition. Um, but again, I, IKEA is really kind of a, a niche uh, uh, to its own. So it's pretty easy, it would seem to me, to differentiate oneself. Hoffman says that as the city of Glendale continues to grow, more pressure will be put on the roads and other infrastructure. In Glendale, Erica Arrington, Cronkite News. The new IKEA is expected to break ground next fall and be open in the spring of 2020. These days, cyber crimes can wreak havoc in more ways than we think. From fraudulent charges on a credit card to shutting down entire neighborhoods, nobody is safe from a cyber attack. And Kirika Omernia went to the grand opening of the Arizona Cyber Warfare Range today to find out one important way to protect against these attacks. Experts say that in Arizona alone, there are 7,200 cyber jobs available. People who go to the range can figure out what just, just what it takes to get a job in this field. We have a huge cybersecurity skills gap. But most people that are in the cybersecurity industry are so bad at their jobs that if they were in any other job, they would be arrested or indicted for fraud. Brett Scott is the co-founder of the Arizona Cyber Warfare Range. His company teamed up with Grand Canyon University to educate the public about cybersecurity. Scott says the range is available for anyone from a mom who wants to protect her kids to someone who wants to launch a career in the industry. Right now, our enemies have it all over us, and if we want to survive, we must get more people in this fight, capable cyber warriors. I'm actually a security analyst at McKesson, so I work in the security operations center there. Nick Flahiff volunteers at the range. As an information technology professional, he says he doesn't fear the future of his career. The amount of open jobs, uh, they need people so badly, so they're willing to, you know, this is a field you don't need a college degree. You don't need any certifications. Really, all you need is, is hands-on experience. While Flahiff did not go to college, Carissa Nolan took a different path. She majors in information technology at GCU, and she discovered her love of cybersecurity in high school after her teacher was locked out of a computer. I told him, I was like, well, I can try to get into it if, like, it's not technically allowed, but if you're okay with it and you won't, like, get it, me in trouble, yeah, I'll do it. She now hopes to stop people who use that skill with bad intentions. Scott stresses the importance of people filling these jobs and what could happen if they don't. Better brush up on your foreign language skills because we're not going to have a country anymore. The range is free to use for anyone with an interest in this career. In the control room in Caracol, Marinia, Cronkite News. Would you say your last visit to Sky Harbor International Airport was satisfying? According to a new survey, more travelers are saying yes. Cronkite News reporter in Kirka Marinier takes a look at what else is taking off at Sky Harbor. Phoenix Sky Harbor International Airport has spent millions of dollars improving and the changes are paying off. Last year's J.D. Power Associates study, we were ranked 14th and this year we are tied for third place. The satisfaction study surveyed almost 35,000 North American domestic travelers. Sky Harbor tied with McCarran International Airport in Nevada, Orlando was first and Detroit second. Phoenix's emphasis on creating a happy customer experience is one of the reasons for the jump. Customer service is one of our top priorities after safety and security. New changes to the airport such as interactive directories, new restaurants in retail, and the ability to check wait times for security lines played a big role as well. 
really helpful for more than 80% of our travelers who come through Terminal 4, our busiest, because they can go to any of the four security checkpoints. So if they know what the wait time is, they can go to another one if it's less time that they don't have to wait. City officials approve the multi-million dollar project because of the strong economic impact the airport has. According to the W.P. Carey School of Business, it puts $12 billion in the economy annually and supports almost 60,000 jobs. But the renovations didn't cost taxpayers a cent. The airports fund it through uh, passengers, and basically if you use the airport, you're going to help pay for the airport. Some of the money spent on tickets, dining, and retail go toward the airport, and flyer Brittany Kupke says the higher costs are worth it, especially when it comes to the self-service ticket kiosk installed last year. Well, actually, the kiosk is really good because then you don't have to stand in line, <laughs> which can take a really long time, especially if you're in a hurry. To make it easier for passengers to get from the terminals to the rental car center, the city is planning to extend the SkyTrain in the near future. In Phoenix, in Kirkomrania, Cronkite News. Would you work for a company whose values did not match yours? In Kiriko Marinier, talk to workers in Phoenix about what impacts their choice when it comes to employment. A recent report funded by the Case Foundation surveyed millennials from every region in the country and found that more of them are saying no to companies that don't make a conscious effort to help society. In the Valley, companies make sure that potential employees know about its efforts to contribute. People are your product and the people are who make you. You know, if we don't have Sean Gadwani is a senior auditor at Copper Point Mutual Insurance no, Company. So if they're not doing that and they're not doing a job showing that, then I don't, I don't want to be involved. The 26-year-old says that the company's dedication to serving people played a big part in his accepting this position about three months ago. Corporate social responsibility is a company's approach to helping society and is performed in various ways. For example, Copper Point prides itself on its annual Pack to School project. So each year we adopt an entire elementary school. The company buys the backpacks, the employees buy all of the supplies, stuff the backpacks, and then we deliver them to the school children. Editor of Green Living Magazine in Scottsdale, Dory Morales, says her company fulfills its social responsibility by taking care of the environment. In the company, all of our furniture that we have has been recycled. All of our electronics are recycled. We try to do as many things digitally as we can. Morales says the goal is to starve landfills by decreasing waste. She makes sure that everyone she hires has a similar aim. I'm hiring individuals. I make sure that they align with our mission and vision and that our core values are one. And I ask them what they expect in a company culture because we want to create a culture of people that all have the same values. Millennial Miranda Van Horn, communications assistant at Copper Point, possesses the same values as the company she works for, which impacted her decision to work here. However, she says it's not only important to her work life, but her personal life as well. That's what makes a place a home. Is, is feeling a part of the community. If the worst were to happen, could your family afford to pay thousands of dollars for a funeral? Over the past 30 years, the price of funerals in the United States has risen about 228 percent, almost twice the rate of all consumer goods. Reporter Tim Johns shows us how the prices here in Arizona compare to the rest of the nation. Sam Bueller is a third generation funeral director who owns Wyman's Cremation and Burial in Mesa a small funeral home that stresses customer satisfaction. I'm involved in every aspect of the business um, here. So, for example, from the time that I get, we don't have an answering service, we answer our own phones, we do our own transportation. Because Bueller's business takes care of these things in-house, that's allowed it to buck the trend of rising funeral prices. Wyman's hasn't raised its prices for the past eight years. But that's not to say there isn't pressure. Prices have risen both nationally and locally, although at different rates. While the average cost of a funeral nationwide is about $6,400, here in Arizona we average about $5,900, a $500 difference. The Arizona Board of Funeral Directors and Embalmers says many people have moved to Arizona from elsewhere and they often don't want to ship bodies back home, so instead they choose cremation. In Arizona, our cremation averages are above national averages. We are 68% cremation for the last two calendar years, we've held steady at 68% cremation. That's really high. No matter what the price, Bueller says it's never too early to start making plans. People don't want to sit around the dinner table and discuss funeral costs. My advice to those group of people would be do your research, check around, call around to the funeral homes, see how you're treated on the phone. We plan everything in life, 
Doing so for death could save your family some grief and some money. In Mesa, Tim Johns, Cronkite News. Currently, about 53% of Americans choose to have traditional burials, and 47% choose cremation. The art of meditation has been practiced in the East for thousands of years, but in recent decades, its popularity has also begun to spread to the West. And as reporter Tim Johns got to find out, with its popularity surging, one valley business has been at the forefront of spreading this ancient practice. Margaret Beresford, like many of us, leads a seemingly non-stop and stressful life. Tired of feeling disconnected from the world around her, Beresford turned to meditation several years ago. I'm using it as a way to actually reconnect with myself, center myself, and be present in the moment so I can be in the moment and connect with people in the moment. Beresford practices at Current Meditation, the world's first meditation franchise that opened its doors in Arcadia just last year. Ross Weissman is the CEO of Current Meditation. He believes that one of the reasons why meditation is so popular among people is because its benefits stay with you throughout the entire day. Every class that we put on has scientifically backed techniques included. Those are mindfulness techniques and harmonic sound. Each of those are techniques that uh, bring your brain through different brainwave states. Weissman isn't alone in his thinking. According to Fortune magazine, meditation is now a billion dollar business and one that Weissman is keen to become an industry leader in. Current meditation plans to open up as many as 175 new locations nationwide in the next three years. And for Beresford, she hopes that others are able to benefit from this growing trend as much as she has. I'm working towards getting to the place where I feel like I would be able to have the com control over my mind in, in uh, a much deeper way that would allow me to um, live my best life. But in the meantime, Current Meditation says it can help people find a moment of peace in their stressful lives. In Arcadia, Tim Johns, Cronkite News. The Arizona Diamondbacks take on the Colorado Rockies tonight in their first postseason game since 2011. And being back in the playoffs means big business around the ballpark. Cronkite News reporter Andy Krauss is live at the Chase Field. Diamondbacks players and fans aren't the only ones hoping for a long postseason run. Local business owners are feeling the playoff buzz as well. Restaurants and bars surrounding the Chase Field area, like Marley's, Coach's Corner, and the park, are hoping the game affects their bottom line far beyond just tonight. It's definitely going to make an impact, and I think um, the further the Diamondbacks go, I think that could impact all of downtown uh, for quite some time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the sports bars downtown surrounding Chase Field haven't experienced the playoff rush since the last time the Diamondbacks made the postseason six years ago. They say the D-backs' success is somewhat intertwined with their own. Now that they got some momentum and they're winning games, it just kind of brightens everything up for people. So uh, we just get busy, really. You know what I mean? We get busy, good dinner, lush, uh, rushes, um, post rushes after the game. So it just brings a good vibe downtown for us. That's why sports spots downtown are rooting hard for a win tonight and a long October playoff run. Big games like this, championships, um, anything coming downtown sports related is uh, obviously great for us. You know what I mean? So it's obviously better weeks, better months for us. The Diamondbacks haven't been deaf to the buzz leading up to the game. Manager Tori Lovello said Tuesday he's excited to bring the benefits that come with winning back to Phoenix. I've been saying that we're Arizona proud. We, we, we love um, the fact that we represent the state of Arizona. Um, we are really excited about knowing that this is a sellout tomorrow. We want to go out and perform, make, make this city proud of us. The news at Chaseville goes beyond tonight's game. The Maricopa County Stadium District Board of Directors approved a $3.75 million contract allowing steel and concrete repairs to the stadium. The improvements will begin once the team wraps up their season. Live from Chase Field, Andy Krause, Cronkite News. You've probably seen people riding them down the sidewalk, in the park, or around town. Electric skateboards have become one of the trendiest ways to get around and one Valley Skate Company is said to leave its competitors in the dust. 
Although only 21, Levi Conlo is already making huge waves across the skating community. The Grand Canyon University student was walking between classes one day when inspiration struck. Someone flew past me on an electric skateboard, uh, instantly fell in love. I knew I had to have one, uh, looked it up, couldn't afford it, and that started the years. Shortly after, Conlo began making his own boards and founded Electric Lawn Boards along with his friend and classmate, Nathan Cooper. The pair began selling their boards online last year and success was almost instant. In a little over 12 months, the duo have made over $700,000 in revenue and sold over 1,500 boards. But there's more to this blossoming company than meets the eye. Beyond the hard work and success is a very special concept. It's called conscious capitalism, and it's at the core of electric lawn boards. Conscious capitalism is the idea that um, there's something bigger than the business, right? It's, it's about giving back, helping others in need. The two take this message to heart and plan on giving back in a big way this holiday season when they donate 1,000 boards to foster kids throughout the valley. Because for Conlo, it's never been about the money. It's always been about giving back and spreading the hobby that he loves. We focus on the customer, the community, the culture we're developing, and the sales and the numbers, that all comes second. In Phoenix, Tim Johns, Cronkite News. Electric Longboard Signature Board, the LS, retails for $429. Haunted houses are popular around this time of year, but would you knowingly buy a house rumored to have ghosts? And Kiriko Marinier is at the Hotel San Carlos in downtown Phoenix. Long rumored to be haunted, she's been looking into what sellers have to disclose when it comes to those rumors. This hotel has offered ghost tours in the past that have attracted a lot of curious visitors. However, that is not always the case for the real estate industry, where selling a potentially haunted house would only attract the bravest of buyers. Yes, Casey Moore's is a haunted house. David Schleifer is the general manager of Casey Moore's Oyster House in Tempe. He's been working at the bar since 1989, and in that time, has seen his share of paranormal activity. All of a sudden, my tie went to the left, and it went back to the right. And I felt it, and I stopped. In 1983, Patricia St. Vincent did not know the house was haunted until after she bought it. Arizona law says that sellers must disclose certain things about a home, such as its structural integrity and environmental issues it may have. Paranormal activity? Not on the list. When it comes to like a haunted house, that's what's called like a psychological effect of the property. Um, so there's no obligation to disclose it automatically in Arizona. Salvion says if asked, sellers have to tell the truth about if a house is believed to be haunted. A case in New York dealt with a seller who had previously advertised the house as haunted, but held that information when a potential buyer asked about it. So later the buyer was able to get out of the deal because there was no investigation that the buyer could have done. You have to do your due diligence, do your research, maybe talk to the neighbors and, uh, you know, find out if the house is rumored to be haunted. Real estate agent Shelly Sakala says the Hotel San Carlos is believed to be haunted, which is a reason some people stay there. But at Casey Moore's, they say ghost rumors are not really a selling point. It just comes with the charm and the mystique, and it's a story to talk about. A recent study on Realtor.com says that 33% of people would be willing to live in a haunted house, depending on the type of paranormal activity. In Phoenix, in Kiriko Marnia, Cronkite News. Job and internship interviews can sometimes be intimidating, especially when the interview takes place over dinner. The Be A Leader Foundation and Blue Cross Blue Shield teamed up to host an etiquette dinner for college students across the valley last night. Reporter Nicole Gutierrez shows us how students are learning more than the basic business manners. Tight grip. Handshakes. Silverware. So eating is, is a quiet, unobtrusive. And table manners are just some of the things college students are being exposed to. I don't know anything about this. Omo Kumara is one of the many college students here to learn how to potentially make good impressions on employers. What you see here is an etiquette class. To help students begin to think about how they present themselves for their future clients, for future um, employers, all that kind of stuff, to help them to kind of understand what is appropriate to do, what is not appropriate to do. Students that attend the etiquette dinner not only learn what fork and what knife to use and when to use them, but they also learn that the food isn't the most important part of a dinner. 
85% of what employers really look at is how people can socialize with people more than the skills themselves. I think now if I go to another business event, I will know how to handle myself, how to eat and how to behave and what to what to wear before you even go in there. Quad coordinator Rachel Olson says it's not just what's on your resume that can land you a job. It's really about having the confidence to sit around a table with people that are interviewing you or that you're trying to impress. Confidence these students can take to the table. In Phoenix, Nicole Gutierrez, Cronkite News. Has your sweet tooth ever given you a case of late night cravings, but you were too lazy or too tired to go out and satisfy it? If so, reporter Tim Johns introduces to us One Valley Business attempting to fix that. I love desserts. I have the biggest sweet tooth. Avery Brooks is a law student, small business owner, and self-proclaimed cookie queen. A few years ago, Brooks started Totally Baked, a delivery-only or ghost restaurant that delivers freshly baked cookies and desserts to your front door from the weekend hours of 7 p.m. to 4 a.m. We were all hanging out and we realized there's no, there's no places open past midnight that serve desserts. And we took it a step further and decided, well, if we're up late, we want it delivered to us. According to the Arizona Restaurant Association, Totally Baked is one of the only ghost restaurants operating here in the Valley. While the trend has hit big in cities like New York and L.A., it hasn't taken off in Phoenix yet. And for Brooks, the success didn't always come easy. You have to believe in what you're doing, first and foremost. I just believed that it would happen, and everything fell into place. Amy Newton is Totally Bates co-founder who believed in Brooks's vision, even in a city that's not known for being 24-7. I knew her really well, and I believed in her so much that I believed in kind of whatever idea she had. And for Brooks, that faith will keep her moving forward with expansion plans once she finishes school in the spring. Once I graduate, I think we will plan on moving into more of a retail traditional um, space. Giving up the ghost for brick and mortar. In Phoenix, Tim Johns. Cronkite News. Thanks for joining us for this special edition of Cronkite News. For more multimedia coverage, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org and click on the Money tab.